Today we have the top 10 hottest stock news just for you to save you some time from all of the volatility that's been going on in the marketplace. Now please leave a big like if you don't mind and please subscribe to this channel for more investor tips and investing news. So to not waste your time, let's get into the news right now and I have timestamps in the description box below of each stock so you can pick out your favorite stock and get the news right Away. Stock number one, we have ticker symbol XONE. This is a 3D printing company. It's called X1 Company. Alliance Global upgraded this stock recently to a buy from neutral and adjust the price target to 29 from $12. So that's more than double the price. And this was due to the recent news that they just that they reached an agreement and they just licensed for commercial use. So let's go into that news and let's go into some potential catalysts. It says X1 is in licensing deal to 3D print parts in aluminum infiltrated barone carbide. This is a an aluminum metal. On Tuesday, it reached an, a commercial license agreement. Now it had a distributing agreement with this company, but they recently just did the commercial agreement and now they're in talks with the commercial agreement and they think they're almost finalizing it. With the US Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Lab to 3D print parts in aluminum infiltrated barone carbide, this laboratory has a patent pending product method of 3D printing parts in aluminum infiltrated Barone Carbide on an Exxon 3D printer. The material is used to produce kilometers, neutron imaging components, and shielding equipment used to deflect or absorb energy. This is used on an X1 MFLEC, which is a 3D printer that uses binder jetting technology to 3D print in metals, ceramics, and other powder materials. The distributing side of this has been going on since 2019 and it's great to see that the research has gone into 2021. They're almost launching, they're almost printing. So this is going to be huge for their revenue. So check that out for a major catalyst. The 3D printing sector as a whole is supposed to 5 to 10x in the next five years. So it's a great opportunity and a great catalyst to get in right now. The price is currently at $27.74. It went up 7% due to the news. But as Kathy Wood calls this, this is the Valley of Despair. And it's basically seen lows and been stagnant for a very long time. It's now finally seeing some uptrend. You definitely are able to get into the stock. Number two, we have ticker symbol RDHL. This is the biopharmaceutical company known as Red Hill. So it had a major breakthrough with a treatment for the pandemic vaccine that's going around. And this shows very promising data. So we're going to talk about the news for this. We're going to talk about a major catalyst for this. Red Hill Biopharma announces Data Safety Monitor Monitoring Board, also known as the DSMB, for company's phase two, three trial of Opagonib recommended to continue study. So this is an Israeli company. This is a specialty biopharma pharmaceutical company today announced that the DSMB for the global phase 2-3 study of Opagonib in patients with severe COVID unanimously recommended to continue the study following a pre-scheduled futility review of unblinded efficacy data from the first 135 patients treated in the study and safety data from the first 175 patients. So the efficacy and safety were very great results, so they told them to continue the study, and this was done unanimously. The background therapy is expected in the coming weeks and is planned to be provided for peer review. The primary endpoint of the global phase two, three study, or goal, is now the proportion of patients reaching room air, no longer requiring oxygen, by day 14 previously a key secondary endpoint. They're also looking to expand the number of patients studied. This is being done in seven countries, with additional sites and countries being added in the coming days and weeks. Now, a potential catalyst for this is that the top line, top line data can, and potential global emergency use of 
authorization applications are expected in the second quarter of 2021. So if they can get the emergency authorization, then it's going to be a huge catalyst for the stock. Now, one of the advantages of this biopharmaceutical treatment is that it's a therapy and it can be used with any of the COVID strains. The global phase two, three study demonstrated greater improvement in reducing oxygen requirement by end of treatment on day 14 across key primary and secondary efficacy outcomes. Also showed no material safety differences between the opagonib and placebo treatment arms. So opagonib is an oral SK2 inhibitor with demonstrated anti-inflammatory, anti-vaccine, and anti-thrombotic activity. And SK2 is just involved with the replication of the virus so it doesn't grow as quickly. So this is really amazing um, what they're doing. They're able to help get patients off of the oxygen, stop spreading the growth of the, the vaccine and help patients um, not get the mutated virus. So just be on the lookout for that global emergency authorization because that's going to be a huge catalyst if they're able to get to the endpoint of the trial. Stock number three, we have ticker symbol BNGO, Bio Nanogenomics. I know this has been a top stock for a while, but it's in the news again, and I'm very happy about this one. So there was basically a webinar that went on, and this is hitting the news like crazy. Dr. Raka from Children's Hospital of LA presents findings that show Sapphire, which is Bio Nano's product, its OGM product detects druggable gene fusions in pediatric acute leukemias that NGS and cytogenics missed. NGS and cyto uh, cytogenetics are the traditional standard use of care that clinicians use to help uh, detect leukemias. She reported on the performance of optical gene mapping, OGM, for the clinical analysis of pediatric or kids acute leukemias she demonstrated how Sapphire detected clinically important structural variants, SVs, and these are basically changes in DNA that can alter patient care and treatment decisions. These SVs were not detected when the samples were evaluated with a combination of NGS, next generation sequencing, and three cytogenetic methods that are the standard of care in leukemia testing. Now, these are the traditional tests that they normally use, which were proven invalid because it detects all types of SVs with better precision, higher resolution, and better sensitivity. And then she went on to say that leukemia accounts for more than a quarter of cancer cases in children and is the number two cause of cancer death. They currently need to use four different methods to characterize their patient's leukemia genomes. And after using four of the traditional tests, 15% still showed no signs of leukemia, even though it was there. The gene fusions were missed by the traditional by the traditional techniques because they either had not been reported in, in pediatric cancer before. In seven out of eight cases, OGM detected SVs that four separate analyst methods missed. That's honestly huge for the Sapphire product and huge for cancer detection. Eric Homlin, who is the CEO, he's very outspoken about this product. He believes in it so much. He's really well-spoken. See it. CHLA is one of the top five pediatric cancer hospitals in the nation and a pioneer in the use of novel diagnostics, diagnostic and therapeutic tools. Dr. Rocco's results with Sapphire demonstrate the importance of comprehensive genome-wide detection of, of SV in pediatric cancers. So basically they were going for cancers that were with adults, but now they're focusing on pediatric care as well and with children. Sapphire will continue to transform cytogenomic testing with a single assay that can provide more actionable results faster. So basically he's saying that this is one tool instead of using four or several different tests to detect one type of leukemia. So be on the lookout for more findings in bio nanogenomics. They have a very strong Twitter following and they're just publishing articles left and right. So definitely look out for those because anytime something is published, the stock normally goes up. 
stock number four, we have ticker symbol DDD, which is a 3D printing company, 3D, and it's been around for about 30 years. Now let's talk about the, the news for this one because this is juicy. It's currently down 400% since its highest levels in 2017. But now may be the time for this 3D printing company to come back to life. It was very um, into social media and it was just trying to hype up its own stock. People caught on to that and it went all the way back down to $5. This week alone, it's seen an over 100% increase and it was recently hailed in Yahoo Finance as one of the top 10 stocks to buy. The top hedge fund holder of this stock is D.E. Shaw, which had $11 million invested in the stock at the end of September. An insider purchased 17,000 shares at around $5 in September 2020. The company provides 3D printing and printers for plastics and metals, which can be used for dental care. During the third quarter of 2020, the company reported a product business generated revenue of $77.2 million. The value skyrocketed more than 100% last Thursday after the company announced an impressive revenue outlook for the fourth quarter. It expects to report revenue in the range of $170 million to $176 million for the quarter, which is well above estimates. It also says that it has completed the sale of its non-core software business, for total proceeds of $64.2 million, thus they ended all of their debt and their balance sheet is more balanced than ever. Many believe that the company would finally be able to end its losing streak and turn a profit very soon. So people are expecting this very undervalued DDD stock to rise up in price over the next five years substantially. The company has turned itself around, completely transforming the business by divesting non-core assets, improving the balance sheet, and becoming more effective. But he said he's over his bull case now because it's risen up way too much. So he's saying all of these great things. He's just saying it's overvalued right now for what the actual business model is. So he's still bullish on it, but he has a price target of $27. Now, I think this is really good. It's showing that the company is growing overall and imagine what it can do when all of these companies are growing like crazy. They're all going to need 3D printers. Um, they're all going to need 3D printers. The aerospace industry is going to need them. The dental care industry is going to need them. Healthcare is going to need them going to be a very huge industry. Stock number five that we have not talked about on this channel yet. It is uh, quite a fun company to talk about though, and this is ticker symbol DKS or Dick Sporting Goods. I wanted to talk about this because on February 1st, they are launching a new female product line called Empower Her, and they are also um, pledging to do female empowerment with their product lines throughout 2021. So we will talk about the news for that. I think that's a huge major catalyst is a launch of female uh, products, which is actually on Monday. <laughs> So let's talk about their initiatives and why I'm so bullish on this because I think through all of their approaches and what they're doing, it's going to bring in a bigger female clientele for Dick's Sporting Goods. To celebrate the upcoming National Girls and Women's Day, which is February 3rd, Dick's announced it will expand its efforts in support of females, a commitment by the Dick's Sporting Goods Foundation to donate 100 100,000 sports bras over the next 18 months to under-resourced female athletes across the country. Many girls do not have access to them, something that can contribute to increased dropouts in sports. They were saying that at age 14, it's twice as likely for girls to quit sports as boys because they're very self-conscious. And it says that 73% of girls actually have body concerns at 14. Second, they plan to have the first ever girls power panel for 13 through 17 aged girls with the goal of giving a younger generation of females a voice to provide general insights on sports issues, give their input on product offerings and initiatives, 
and help overcome barriers for women in sports. You just need to fill out a form at dicks.com. Third, they're also doing a social media challenge with the hashtag Stronger with Sports. Candace Parker, Sydney LaRoe, and Morgan Simeone are propelling this challenge forward. They said that you basically post a sports photo from when you were younger and describe how sports have positively impacted your life and will encourage others to post in support of the challenge on National Girls and Women in Sports Day, which again is February 3rd. And then number four, as I mentioned, um, the launch that is expecting for the product line, they're going to have a very low discount price for that. I think this is a fantastic initiative. I think it will bring a lot more of the female demographics, specifically younger females, to dick sporting goods, which has historically been more catered towards guys. Be on the lookout for the product launch to spike the shares and also for the Women's Day to spike the shares as well. Number six, we have ticker symbol SKLZ. This is Skills. They're in the news because of GameStop, because of the short sellers, but that was for another video. Today I wanted to talk about their partnership with Play Mechanics to bring mobile competition to legendary first person shooter by Big Buck Hunter, which is a big arcade franchise. It's coming to mobile with a new game built exclusively for skills. So imagine how many customers are going to be in skills because of this merger. The leading mobile games platform for fair, fun, and meaningful competition. The partnership will broaden the franchise's fan base, reaching millions of mobile gamers competing on the skills platform. You can also bet on the skills platform. It also marks skills expansion into the FPS, first person shooter genre, one of the most popular categories in modern gaming. So this is huge. With over 46,000 arcade machines sold to bars and restaurants across the world, which obviously is not happening as much right now because of the pandemic, Big Buck Hunter is one of the best-selling arcade shooters of all time. The new skills-powered edition of the classic game will be available to both existing fans and the world's 2.7 billion mobile gamer. Big Buck Hunter has actually been around for around 20 years and it's gotten quite a name for itself. So this is a huge partner for them and I anticipate them to partner with a lot of other players to create the best games at skills. Game developer Play Mechanic is a is custom designing the mobile version of Big Buck Hunter exclusively for the skills platform with a focus on replicating the quintessential competitive arcade and console experience. All fans of the FPS genre will be able to utilize their skills as well. They want to deliver the same game that's very nostalgic that gamers love into the mobile space. I think this is great for both companies. Big Buck Hunter has built a loyal following and robust fan base which was going to go over into skills. By partnering with skills, play mechanics will be able to achieve higher monetization than would be possible with ads or in-game purchases by providing mobile users with a competitive gameplay experience. So basically what you can do is compete in Big Buck Hunter um, on mobile on mobile devices against other users and you can actually win cash prizes. I think this is a mutually beneficial partnership and I think they're doing I think Skills is doing exactly what they need to do to get a loyal fan base, to get customers over, over into the mobile gaming world. So this is definitely a major catalyst, especially when they report earnings, because I think the revenues are going to go through the roof with this. Stock number seven, which has not seen a spike up yet. And this is really good news and we are going to talk about it being a catalyst because I think it is and it's in a very, very hyper growth industry. This is ticker symbol SWKS and it's Skyworks Solutions. It's in the 5G space, which is currently one of the fastest growing spaces and it will be a huge industry by 2025. It's currently sitting at $169.25 and it only rose about 5%. Now, once I tell you about this news, it is 
absolutely huge and you will see that it needs to have another spike up. They just had their earnings report and let me tell you, did they beat that earnings report? They literally knocked it out of the park. So their earnings per share were $3.36, which beat estimates by over 61%. The revenues were $1.51 billion, which beat the estimates by 42%. Their top line increased 69% year over year, which was from the rapid deployment of 5G because there was a completely increased demand for Skyworks Solutions 5G. Its revenue from broad markets were $326 million, which is an increase of 35% year over year. And what had investors and analysts absolutely craving more of this company was its upbeat guidance for 2021. They're expected to have $1.125 billion in revenue, which is an increase of 50%. Their EPS at $2.34, which is a 75% growth year over year, gross margin of 50.2%. 5% and operating expenses of $150 million. So these are incredible numbers for that company. It had several partners, several mergers. It's um, partnered with Samsung. It partnered with Google for its Fitbit. It's starting um, to be in the health sector, to be in the 6G sector, <laughs> and to be in the 5G sector. So there were several price targets for this as well. There were seven seven <laughs> analysts who raised the price target. Morgan Stanley, which raised the price to 188. Remember the price currently is 169. Raymond James um, increased it to outperform, set the price at $205. Needham raised the price to $245. Rosenblatt raised the price to $240. Bill Riley raised the price target to a buy at $225. Susquehanna raised the price to $190. Mizuo raised the price to $195. So if that doesn't tell you anything, I don't know what does because it looks like a huge upside and they're expecting over a 50% increase for some of these analysts. Stock number eight, we have ticker symbol TTD, and this is Trade Desk. It recently partnered with Walmart, so it's expecting a huge revenue increase. Walmart overhauls ad business will expand both online and in-store advertising. I think this helps Trade Desk a little bit more um, with the revenue side and, and with profits. Walmart has kicked off an overhaul of its advertising business, unveiling a plan to add space for ads at its stores and sharing shopper data with brands. The Arkansas-based company will rebrand its media network from Walmart Media Group to Walmart Connect. The new advertising platform, which will debut in time for the 2021 holiday shopping season, huge catalyst, will be built in partnership with ad technology company Trade Desk, enabling brands to use Walmart's real-time shopper data to make ads more effective and better target audience. So this will obviously be more cost-effective for Walmart and they'll be able to get more customer acquisition. Walmart Connect will focus on three key areas, expanding off-site media opportunities, introducing new in-store experiences, and growing offerings across Walmart's digital property. The retailer said it will leverage its brick and mortar locations to compete with online competitors like Amazon by selling ads on over 170,000 screens inside more than 4,500 US stores. So it's basically using its whole Walmart franchise, its brick and mortar buildings to basically get more online e-commerce uh, purchases, which I think is a really great plan because that's an advantage that Amazon doesn't have is that Walmart can come into its stores and just basically put ads directly in its stores, use its stores for customers to see ads for them to purchase online at home. Marketers will be able to create much more refined, relevant, and measurable advertising campaigns. So they're basically trying to innovate and trying to stand out from the competition. Within five years, Walmart hopes to become one of the top 10 advertising platforms in the United States. So of course, with Trade Desk's help, this is, this is going to help the stock exponentially, both with Trade Desk and Walmart. I think this is mutually beneficial, and I think this is going to help their e-commerce as well. I think Trade Desk is going to be a very good partner for them.
Right now, Trade Desk is sitting at around 760, and actually the price target was raised to $900 by Wells Fargo. So we're seeing that analysts are actually understanding that this partnership will be mutually beneficial and will help Trade Desk's revenue and profits. And there may be some new price upgrades coming soon if they partner with a few more companies. Number nine, we have ticker symbol NVTA. I love NVTA. It's in the genomic space and biopharmaceutical space. It's basically a one-stop shop for all genomics. It's basically the Amazon of genomics, in my opinion. They are partnering with Decibel Therapeutics. They've been partnering with so many huge genomic um, companies lately. It says Decibel Therapeutics and Envite announced launch of Amplified Genetic Testing Program. Uh, Decibel Therapeutics is a clinical stage biotech company dedicated to transforming and developing transformative treatments to restore and improve hearing and balance. They partnered with Invite, a leading medical genetics company, to launch Amplify TM, a no-charge genetic testing program to screen for the genetic cause of hearing loss in children diagnosed with auditory neuropathy, a disorder that affects approximately 10% of children who are born with hearing loss. Auditory neuropathy is a hearing disorder in which the cochlea, the hearing organ located in the inner ear, receives sound normally, yet the transmission of sound to the brain is interrupted. The most common genetic cause of this is insufficient production of a protein called autoferlin, which facilitates communication between the inner ear sensory cells and the auditory nerve. So basically the sound is going into the ear inner ear, but it's not getting to the brain. So this is great because they're trying to treat children diagnosed with hearing loss. And Vita is partnering with a lot of companies and they're basically um, looking at innovative uh, gene editing companies. Really great stock, something you should definitely get into and look with your due diligence. Number 10, ticker symbol T-E-A-M. This is Trello's parent company. They recently had an earnings report and the price target was raised because they had great earnings reports. Fiscal second quarter results that came in better than expected as the company has continued to add new customers during the COVID-19 pandemic. And then there were a lot of analysts that weighed in on this. Raymond James maintained a market perform rating. Needham maintained a hold. KeyBank maintained an overweight rating with a price target to 255. Morgan Stanley maintained an overweight rating with a price target to 270. Overweight is really good. It means that it's going to beat the market. Raymond James said that it was a good quarter and this was basically the key aspects of the earnings. 23% year over year revenue growth at $501 million versus the estimate of 15% growth. Number two, subscription revenue growth of 36% to $311 million and per Petual of $22 million. Paid net ads grew by 11,617 versus the Wall Street estimate of 5,500. Churn improved while tweaks in the Trello platform helped drive more low user accounts. This signals the company's cloud migration strategy and its long-term benefits from its cloud investments are paying off and should generate long-term value. Specifically, the company's data shows it is on track to hit its target of having 50% of server and 66% of medium and large size customers migrated to the cloud by fiscal 2023. So they're going to the cloud, which is a more profitable business model to see if a company is going to the cloud or going to SaaS. That's really good if you're going from a product company to more of a service-based company. Given the highly attractive unit economics of the cloud transition and best-in-class efficiency of the sales organization, we continue to see a path to durable 30% growth post-transition. So most analysts are pretty bullish on this. They're expecting a 30% growth year over year. Now it's sitting at $231.13 currently because it did have a spike in the price. A lot of analysts are saying it's overvalued, but a lot of other analysts are saying that they're very bullish on the stock no matter what, especially for the long term, because they're doing everything right. And they beat earnings. They have a great outlook. So 
very excited to see where this company is going to go from here. We know that cloud and SaaS companies are going to be exponential growers in the next five years, so this is a very promising stock. That was your top 10 stock news updates of the day. Be sure to check out this channel, like, and subscribe for more investor news and tips. And remember to save the world and make yourselves wealthy. Thank you so much for watching, and again, comment down below to let me know what stocks you want me to pick. Bye, Raylanaires!